Soloing Axis is easily the hardest thing I have ever done in Destiny. Today I want to talk about how and why it's possible along with my experience with such a challenge. Before we begin, no, I was not even close to being the first person to do this, and the strategy that I used has become one of the more established strategies developed by the players who beat this in the months prior. I made some slight revisions to suit my own needs, but the overall strategy was not my idea. The majority of the legwork in developing the strategy was done by Skardro, the first guy to solo access. Basically, anything involving solo access, the pathing, the overall strategy, can be directly attributed to him. If you want to see how the fight has evolved since then, check out his kill in the description along with his other links. The current strategy where players do not kill Shanks was first utilized by Cookies and seems to be the most popular now. I used said no shank strategy with a slight revision to how I transition to the damage phase. The only reference I used to start learning this encounter was Slayer Age's video on his kill. So why is Axis Solo possible on normal mode? In short, it comes down to two things. Sword skating and self res. Sunsingers are the only class that can do both of these, obviously. Normally in the encounter, whenever you pick up a cannon and drop it, you get a debuff called Charge Lockout. It lasts for 30 seconds, and it means you can't pick up a SIVA charge. However, when you die, this debuff is removed. So if you're able to kill all three servitors quick enough, you can jump off the map, self-res, and no longer have the debuff while still being empowered. But that alone isn't enough, because the speed required to pull this off is so high, which is where sword skating comes into play. Once again, this is only possible on a Warlock. Sword skating is likely an unintended technique of movement, where you jump and do a dash move with your sword by hitting jump, melee, and then jump again very quickly. Doing this propels you very fast and can be chained on the ground giving you high speed. It is through both of these things that soloing Axis is possible. However, it is possible to solo Axis without the use of a sword, as evidenced by Xbox player Glad doing it with a fourth horseman instead of a sword, it's just that much harder. Let's quickly talk about the loadout. I'm mainly using raid gear with memory of Yolder to prevent sprint lockouts, and sunbreakers for bonus damage, and I'm also utilizing a Viking funeral build. This helps me get more damage onto Axis, along with making shank killing a little bit easier. My weapons are the Burning Eye Trial Scout, the Raid Sniper, and Ray's Lighter. The Burning Eye one-shots shanks when you use accurized ballistics and explosive rounds, the Raid Sniper is good for boss damage whenever you can sneak it in, and Ray's Lighter is good for killing the captains near instantly. Dark Drinker also works, but the animation takes way longer, which can lead to deaths every once in a while. My strategy was adjusted so that I never needed to switch to Dark Drinker. You'll start on the right side next to the doorway on the far wall. When you start the fight, as long as you don't shoot or get in line of sight of the shanks, they are not going to shoot you. This allows the room to spawn the max number of shanks possible. Axis will teleport around the room and shoot three waves of SIVA nanites at you before empowerment goes out. After the second set of nanites in the third wave that he shoots, Shanks will no longer respawn if you kill them, so that is the time to start killing. However, for the first wave, the Shanks aren't going to be aggroed on you or anything, so hitting them might be a little difficult. To get them to group up and become aggroed, simply shoot your gun. People generally shoot at the middle pillar to get the mid Shanks stacked up. You'll only have a very brief time to kill as many as possible before you're empowered and need to start running the route. Some people like to throw a grenade in the middle to try to kill these stacked up shanks. I did not utilize this method because I just couldn't make it work for me, so I just shot a bunch instead. What you'll do is kill the five shanks on what is your left, but the map's right side. I'm going to call this right side for the rest of the video. And then you kill your captain immediately. You'll then run towards the middle of the map and shoot the next captain with the cannon, sticking him and then holding the trigger so that it's a one shot. As you're holding the trigger, you should then jump to the middle by mid-stairs, releasing the trigger and be dropping the cannon on the ground, but before you hit the ground. As you land, you'll jump over the wall and start heading to the left side of the arena. Here, there will be anywhere from 1 to 6 shanks waiting to immediately kill you. A grenade should be thrown here to kill as many as possible. The reason it's so important to kill these shanks is 
well, one, so you don't die, but two, the shanks will actually block the pathing of the servitor to the point where the servitor will get stuck on them. If they aren't moving at their normal speed, that means problems, and even one shank can mess up the pathing. Another thing with the shanks is shooting too quickly. If the shanks are stacked up behind each other and you shoot too fast, you'll actually shoot the dead shank again instead of the one behind it, so pacing your shots is important. Ideally, you should be sword skating to this final captain. However, the game loves to target you towards nearby enemies, even if you're not facing them and are actively moving away from them. If you sword skate near an enemy, the game will send you to that enemy, which will cause you to mess up your route, and occasionally will send you flying off the map. So what you can do is throw a grenade, jump over the shanks as they die, then do a sword skate dash to the captain and kill the captain. Once you have this cannon, go back to the middle and drop it in the same way you did the first. You want to be in the act of dropping it as you are landing, not after you've landed. This way, each cannon lands in front of each staircase, creating separation between both cannons. Next, you need to grab the final cannon, which is in the middle somewhere. If you can sword skate to it, do that. If there are adds, or even if the servitor is nearby, it's best to either wait until you're out of range, or to not dash at all. This is the final cannon, and now you can work on the servitors. You should kill the servitors in the order that you killed the captains for obvious reasons. You don't want the charges to expire. However, killing the servitors needs to be done as fast as humanly possible to maximize your time. A single screw up here means a wipe, regardless of how far you are in the fight. Grabbing the wrong cannon, missing a shot, not having the servitor explode, all of these are common reasons for wiping. Cannon spacing for this reason is very important. If your cannons are all stacked up, then it's going to be tough to grab the correct cannon. The biggest issue here are the railings. You need to make sure you jump just a little bit to make sure your shot goes over the railing safely, but you also need to go as fast as possible. The third servitor will essentially require you to do a pillar jump shot. You're going to stand close to the mid stairs and shoot over the high wall as opposed to running around and shooting from over the railing. Doing it this way is a massive time save and is almost near required for this challenge, but it is possible to shoot the third servitor in the same way that you do the first, it's just a little bit riskier because it's slower. After blowing up all three servitors, it's time to jump off the map. Drop your cannon next to the railing and jump off. If your cannon falls with you, that's very bad, and for most people, is probably going to be a wipe since you need all the damage that you can get. The timing of the self-res is very important, because normally when you die, you lose empowerment. You need to time your self-res in a way where you will not lose empowerment. You want to self-res before you actually die, so that you don't lose any time. What I did was use my sword model as a guideline. Whenever the tip of the sword passed this line on the wall, that's when I self-rezzed. However, while empowerment will stay on you a good majority of the time, messing up this timing means a wipe. So let's say you have your empowerment still, that's good. You're going to jump the railing and throw your first bomb, angled moderately high but not high enough that you'll hit the ceiling. Then you're going to move to the mid charge and throw that with a pretty severe angle pointed up. It is a long throw. Ideally, you'll perform at least one sword skate to dash to the mid orb, preferably two, but one is fine for most cases. Then you'll either do zero or one dashes to the final bomb, depending on distance. Keep in mind that these bombs need to be thrown almost immediately after you grab them, depending on timing, and you should try to not stop moving. In some cases, you may have enough time to carry the final orb a few feet before throwing or carrying it into the middle, but you'll get a feel for how long you have with the charge before it explodes. Assuming you've hit your three bombs, Axis will now teleport to one of the four locations. Axis does actually tell you which direction he will go in, as indicated by a small twirling helix shape towards the end of all of the particle effects. You need to be able to read this particle effect and be moving to the destination within fractions of a second to get to his back on time, otherwise it'll just close. You can't wait in the dead center of the map either because if he goes mid, he'll just crush you, so you really need to be ready to go. This is something I'll go into later in the video, but in my first kill, I was able to pick up a cannon from the middle every time. For a lot of other videos that I saw, this was not the norm whatsoever. But regardless of picking up a cannon or not, I made sure to start the second teleport with a fresh cannon, because if I didn't, I might get stuck with a mostly empty cannon on the next teleport, 
if it went to the left or the right. If Axis goes to the left or the right and I don't have full charges in my cannon, I might have to waste time sprinting back to grab a new one. You should be using every single cannon shot at max charge. With some good teleport RNG or with some very good shooting, you might even have time to shoot Axis with your sniper for some extra damage. To keep adding even more damage, meleeing the boss in between each charge is crucial, especially with a Viking Funeral build. You then need to go through that entire process at least four and a half more times before you're able to bring Axis to final stand. When Axis does hit final stand, you need to have at least nine cannon shots in order to kill him, and that is a very hard nine, nothing less. The better your damage is in the first damage phases, the more shots you will have available to you for this part. The damage pace per phase is approximately 2.23 million damage. That means you need to be doing that much damage to access every single damage phase, and that does include SIVA charges. In total, on a kill, you'll be doing about 11.8 million damage to Axis, again, including charges. That doesn't mean Axis has 11.8 million health, though, since of the 11.8 million damage you do, about 1.84 million of that is via SIVA charges on his regenerating shield. But it's the best way to gauge your process. One major thing that I changed from the typical strategy was how I got my first cannon for the first teleport. Most others who completed this challenge would jump high into the air after throwing the third SIVA charge in order to sword dash to the side that Axis teleported to in order to stun. I could not get that to work for me for whatever reason, but what did work for me was running up from the ground. Since I was running up from the ground, I figured that if I could grab a cannon on the first stun, I would be way ahead in damage, and this is actually part of the strategy to kill Axis in four damage phases instead of five. So, what I ended up doing was whenever I swapped a cannon during the server killing, I would strafe my character towards the stairs as I dropped my cannon and picked up a new one. Cannons will keep their movement momentum when swapped, and if done correctly, the cannon will fall down the stairs to the bottom. This was more important to have on the left side stairs than on the right side since you are always ending up on the left side. So if I managed to get a cannon down the left stairs, I could easily jump over the wall after throwing the third charge and pick up the cannon as I started my sprint to whatever side I needed to go to. If you're anything like me and do end up trying this challenge, you'll learn this fight over three or four phases. The first phase is just running the route and getting fast at it. This is the most technically challenging portion of the fight. The second phase is reading his teleports and dealing damage. One misread and your run is over. One hesitation, one bump on a staircase, one tiny little anything means the end of a run. The biggest thing here is just learning to read the teleports and finding the route that works best for you. For me, running to the left and right meant that I was going to jump before the boxes in the middle as opposed to after. This gave me ample landing room and the ability to shoot the cannon while running much easier. Also, some people like to stand on the middle box in between the two staircases in the middle, and some people like to stand on the ground. Finding which one of those paths works for you is also important. The third phase is simply consistency, being able to get farther and farther into the damage phase. In total, I spent about 25 hours learning this encounter to the point where I was in a position where I could actually beat it. There is a slight sense of mastery after beating it, but knowing that all it takes is one little screw up didn't really give me the feeling of mastery. Some people will tell you that there isn't any RNG in this boss fight. I'm going to say that there is. However, regardless of the RNG at play, it is basically always possible to complete the encounter. But there are plenty of things that will stop you dead in your tracks that you feel you have no control over. I certainly felt like that many, many times. If a couple of shanks don't patrol in their typical direction, if a captain teleports as you shoot him with a cannon, if a shank gets in the way and blocks a shot, if a shank blocks the servitor from moving, if the sword doesn't one-shot the captain, if you don't get empowered, things like that can and will screw up a run and you will feel helpless when it does. Sometimes it's BS, sometimes it's not, but know that the overwhelming majority of the time, it's likely you messing something up and it's not anything RNG. Overall, this is easily the hardest challenge in Destiny currently for anything PvE. This challenge demands perfection over the course of about 17 minutes. 17 minutes of perfect play and preferably no random BS happening along the way. 
If you're really, really, really looking for a challenge and want to put your skills to the test, this is definitely a very brutal challenge. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating would be appreciated. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.